Hi, I'm Ashley from Hootsuite Enterprise, and I'm here today with Aparna Mukherjee, social media editor and journalist. And uh, we're here today to talk about the ebb and flow of social um, and the changing of tides, if you will, for businesses embracing social media. We're here at PivotCon, and obviously social business is what everyone's talking about and what is a social business. And certainly what we're seeing is that a social business is an organization that's not just using social internally within one department, it's a business that embraces it throughout all departments and, and all employees. So um, really, it's social business is business as usual, if you will. So in your research, in working with the Fortune 100 brands that you've worked with, um, what would you say is, is the standard of social business as usual? Well, Ashley, I think you actually nailed it. It's business as usual is social business at this point. I think the bigger question is what business isn't becoming social? Um, you know, we spend so much time, and, and I think, frankly, in terms of social media, a little too much emphasis talking about consumer-facing platforms and, and the amount of time and energy and resources that are spent building out these very personal profiles on platforms like Facebook and Twitter, and the interesting sort of notion that work is going to start resembling that a lot more, that the things that we actually play on now might be how we work. And so I think every business inherently is kind of grasping that there are productivity gains that you get from working this way. So I think every business is becoming social on a basic level. Now that's interesting that you say productivity gains because I can imagine as a CEO that's maybe not um, comfortable with social um, at every level or for every employee, um, that would be a concern. Maybe social could be perceived as a time waster. Certainly Facebook could be seen as a time waster because it's also a personal space. Um, as a CEO, how, how can you embrace it and what are the productivity gains? Well, you know, we're all learning a lot by playing on Farmville, so, you know, <laughs> there's productivity <laughs> gains there. But seriously, I think um, any CEO or executive that's wondering what the point of social is in terms of how that improves worker gains versus wasting time and creating a time suck just has to think about email as one example. In fact, there was an article in today's Fast Company by Ryan Holmes, CEO of Hootsuite, about how email is really some place that we're spending far too much time and all of this information that's locked up into it. You just have to think about this stat. An average worker spends about one out of 12.6 minutes of his life on 114 emails a day. I mean, that just that stat alone should get, give anyone 12. pause. Yeah. Um, but the idea that a CEO or anyone who's trying to figure out how do you unlock productivity gains has to think about how, how would you make email social? How would you open this up and create actual conversations where every time someone's trying to access the same tiny piece of information that you shared with another colleague in an email, mm -hmm. if you could open it up and make it into content, make it into an actionable piece of information, then it becomes the de facto that we're all publishers, basically. And we're, instead of doing it in this outer facing kind of way that we've done in businesses, we're actually doing it internally, kind of doing the same functions, marketing, for example, that puts all that information out in the world. Mm -hmm. What if we did that internally and remade what a company intranet or wiki could be? Yes, so, so that is something that we're seeing is, is companies are not just acting externally with social with customers, it's also internal. Those conversations are being brought in and socialized between departments. Absolutely. It's just, you know, again, think about all of this time that we're spending on email and then extrapolate that and think about these emails and information kind of silos that are created in, inside of organizations where you're not really talking with anyone outside of like this very small set of people. And then if you could create these opportunities for what I would call cross-pollination, where different departments that don't normally get to speak to one another suddenly are posting, are creating different pieces of content that where there's collaboration and there's sharing and there's commenting and there's liking and all of these fantastic mm -hmm. things, there's just so much more information that you can get out of that and it affects product development, R&D, all of these different areas that I think most people, when they think of social media, are still thinking, you know, what are we posting on Twitter? Yeah, that's great. So then how does technology come into play? How does that, how does the tools that we have um, all of our employees using um, have an impact on this productivity? Well, it's interesting because I think when I look at what CIOs or CTOs are often tasked with, 
you know, in the past it's been about brand reputation, how to safeguard information, proprietary intellectual property kind of stuff. And I think what you see now is really going beyond this normal purview and thinking more about innovation and what, whether it's the hardware, you know, really empowering employees with mobile devices and tablets and that sort of thing, but also really looking strategically at how are you creating these opportunities? How are you encouraging and leading by example in many ways and making sure you create this culture where beyond the actual technology and the platforms, you're creating an organization where it's expected that you're going to share and that openness is, is really an attribute you're looking for employees. So how does mobile come into play? You mentioned the CIO. Um, I know that that role is rapidly changing as a result of social and mobile is, is a component of that. Um, can you tell us about how mobile is yeah, changing? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, there, there are a lot of examples, I think, where um, there's really disruptions to how business is done, how, how people work, how data is shared. So uh, I think a great example in the healthcare industry is, is giving doctors and healthcare providers tablets and mobile devices where instead of creating this kind of shift of, of information still in paper form in some cases, you're, you're broadening it, you're creating big data sets that can be read so that there's more information that's being extracted from it. Um, I think in some cases, I think of big organizations that are international that have really far-flung locations. For the Nature Conservancy, for example, which is an NGO that I love, has created a social intranet where you, know, you have people who are studying what's going on in the Barrier Reef, for example. Um, they're able to transmit what they're doing from location on site using mobile devices and meet virtually with colleagues in these you know, virtual rooms that is, is really something that's powered by their decision to try and connect all of their employees in this very cohesive kind of way that's really resembles more social media than, than the average kind of virtual meeting space. Yeah, great. So it's really, um, it's really disrupting how everything how everything happens, right? With I love the example of, of the board of directors wanting to see, you know, how um, implementing these changes is really um, Im impacting productivity and and um, changing how processes happen and innovating. Um, what about regulated industries? That's where we start to run into some barriers. How does that affect? Um, this use of social media. Yeah, you know, it, it comes back down to um, openness, and there's something that is inherently contradictory, especially in very compliance-driven, regulated industries. I'm thinking of pharmaceuticals, financial services, where you know I've certainly worked in places where you, you know, it, it makes perfect sense, but it's so far away from how I think we'd like to move in social to have, for example, tweets that are prepackaged that sit with legal and compliance for three days before they can be posted. I mean, mm. when you're talking about an industry that is still kind of entrenched in that, is trying to figure out kind of preemptively whether what the SEC or FINRA kind of wants from you, mm -hmm. it's very hard to kind of embrace change. So it's a kind of scary place, and that's where I think the role of a CTO or a CIO um, really kind of leading the charge, or really executives making it clear that Social media is something they're embracing. So, you know, I love seeing executives tweet, for example. I think that sends a really strong signal mm -hmm. to not only external audiences, but internally. I mean, these, what used to be kind of a town hall that occasionally an executive would, would congregate a lot of employees all in one place, suddenly you can have these conversations going on internally in a way that creates engagement and, and sort of a different feeling about a company. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, I know that we, we saw that here at PivotCon where um, they talked about the courage of, of a CEO to, to start tweeting. Um, what is the value in, in having that voice externally and even internally for employees? How is that going to change a company? Well, it really does send that signal and it starts a conversation. You know, uh, again, it's, it seems a little contradictory sometimes that in the consumer marketing space, we're often looking for these evangelists and brand ambassadors among customers or vendors or whoever it is. And I think the idea that you're looking internally and trying to figure out how, how do you activate these groups of people who are spending, I mean, we spend so much of our time at work. And for those of us who are lucky enough to kind of love what we do and to breathe it and live it, mm -hmm. we want to share that. So the idea that an organization 
is really empowering and encouraging and leading by example to have its employees engage on social media and then bring that same mentality internally. I, th I think it's, it's powerful and it's happening. It's kind of inevitable that it's happening, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. And we know that our customers are at the center of you know this social circle. So if an organization is embracing social internally and everyone's using it, then they're also understanding how their consumers are using it. Absolutely. So how does that exchange, how does this internal exchange um, influence that relationship with your customers now externally? Well, I think, I mean, there's fantastic examples of product development and, and companies that have created vitamin water, creating a new flavor or AirTran, um, really going to its customers and saying, what is, it, what is the one thing you want? And now there's Wi-Fi on, on all flights. You know, mm -hmm. Those examples, I think, are fairly clear. The question mark of how, on the enterprise level, you're using a similar kind of set of tools and tactics where you, you're crowdsourcing all these fantastic things, mm -hmm. but then internally, are you doing the same thing? There's this phrase in the design world, uh, co-creation, mm -hmm. and are you setting up the, the what are the mechanisms mechanisms you're using to have these conversations and I have to say I, you know Hootsuite is kind of doing this from the perspective of opening up these channels where instead of again locking everything up in emails talking about how we how we might approach something mm -hmm. you're creating this big open conversation and, right. and that's exciting yeah so you're talking about conversation yeah the tool itself so um, that is valuable, and I think that that's a, a great place to have this exchange internally and then, again, push that out externally. Um, it's not just one or the other we're seeing with the enterprise. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's, it's your point exactly. It's no longer a one-way communication or one set of things. It's the sort of large collaborative universe of different tools and different pieces, and I think that's actually one of the, the kind of cognates from the social media world as we know it on places like Facebook. Um, where it's lots of different types of content. It's lots of different pieces of information that are kind of streaming past you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love the idea that for those of us who do find these platforms really engaging, and I think it's difficult not to, frankly, for the amount of time we spend on Facebook, on Twitter, um, if work starts to resemble that, where you're just in this environment where you have this constant flow of what your colleagues and other groups are kind of doing. Mm -hmm. And you know that, that has to help with the creativity as well as the improvement on R&D, on operations, on these efficiencies. And even from an HR perspective, we talk about social being used at all departments. But if you have an engaged, um, happy, you know, social environment where people are sharing and learning and, em and embracing their company culture and also what, what other departments are learning, um, HR must be picking up on this and using this then for recruitment and, and, and publicizing the culture of the company. Well, again, you know, social media has been used for recruiting by almost everyone, but the notion that you actually have gaming mechanics, this immersive experience, there are, there's great, um, there's some great examples of orientations that no longer are kind of the video that you're watching or even this really kind of staid module. You're actually in an experience where you're experiencing what decisions what you would actually do as a new worker and that that transforms it I mean that that stops being a checkbox to me that's the biggest kind of takeaway mm -hmm. if you're in a business where social media is just another checkbox I don't think you're doing it right I think I think you need not to create well it's not social business I think it's the idea that organically your employees are going to pick up the baton and and run with it and you're giving them the tools in terms of an open social kind of business environment. Yeah, now I like that. You're giving them um, the opportunity to run with it. Uh, something we're hearing more and more is about this idea of storytelling, right? Where you need to nail down your brand story in order for people to take it and own it and then share that. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? What are you seeing there? I think my big takeaway is authenticity. And that's why you have to enable everyone in an organization to represent you on social, internally and externally, because the biggest point of the story is be real. I like it. So we're almost out of time, um, but we want to keep this conversation going. Definitely. So please feel free to ask us more questions or um, contribute to the conversation on, on things you've heard here uh, by tweeting with hashtag Hoot Business. That's Hoot like an owl, business. Thanks for attending, everyone. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. <laughs>